the, the issue of privilege, I mean, it's it's it, it, it's it's kind of is made up to to begin with, um, because race in this country, in particular, was kind of generated to keep poor people apart. Um, when um, when ruling class people uh, want to exploit people, they they could easily bring in Africans. They brought in white people in the early days, and then realized it was just easier to bring in Africans in, and uh, created this whole slave system. Um, and then Native Americans, they just killed off, and then, you know that that their story never gets told. Um, well, what they realize is that well, we can never have poor people unite because. If have them united, and then they'll get the they'll get the gist that we're, we're screwing both of them over. Uh, so, uh, so you know, they came up with the Jim Crow laws, and you know, they're taking their jobs away. They're you know these illegal immigrants, and and um, they'll use anything to keep us divided. Um, and simply, the bosses get away with you know perpetuating um, uh, lies and stereotypes of, about each other and and it even plays out now in this Occupy movement because you have I've been talking to uh, lots of black people who are interested in the Occupy movement you know, you know, all over the state and they're like I don't know about these white folks you know they're a little crazy <laughs> so, no, they, they, yes they are crazy but it's probably not the same thing but the, the news media portrays y'all as as just crazy white folks yeah, I don't know what you're talking about Black Stinky folks, hippies, you know, you know, you know, sleeping in the snow. Yeah, still, you know, still, still live off your uh, civil rights legacy from 50 years ago, and um, you know you got king, you know and you know you know what you're doing, and you know so they're having this dual argument where they're, they're discrediting you and telling folks like like us stay away because it's, you know, you don't really want to be involved because it's, uh, yeah, exactly. So, um, I don't know how to articulate, you know, to, you know, to uh, people of color that, you know, let's work to, you know, um, figure out strategies, how we can work together to change the system because there's folks who are interested in on all sides. So, um, I'll stop right there. I'll just... Let me just, um... Keep it going around. Yeah, we gotta come back. But if I if I may say something factual, um, in Jamestown, the first settlement in America, there were um, there was an attempt to, to enslave Native Americans. There were Africans in chain, and there were white indentured servants in chains. Now Virginia is the first state where we started to have laws that made distinctions by race. So, as, as, far as, as, as far as the legal framework, race is something that was instituted from the beginning as a way, exactly as you said, to keep populations of poor people apart. And the, the, the most miscegenation in America happened in the beginning when the white people in chains and the black people in chains were having sex and having kids. Yeah. And that's when they started to set up a legal framework that punished white people mm -hmm. for helping black people. Right. And that set up a legal framework for white privilege. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, uh, my name is Eddie F. from Saturday and yes. And uh, <clears throat> I have to say that when I was a kid in the first grade in North Collins, uh, I don't remember her name, but I had a teacher that uh, told the class that you know, you're going to have a friend that's not going to like somebody because of color, their race, or whatever. You don't go out and not like that person because your friend don't like them. That was stereotyping. And I never forgot that, and I lived my life by it. And I love her for telling me that. Um, you know, I have, I've developed friends in all my years that are of different nationalities, colors, and areas. And... Uh, I love them like brothers and sisters, you know, and I don't say that because it's just something I'm saying, it's something that I feel deep inside. 
when I hear the kids talking about uh, prejudicial issues, how they're so much better than somebody, I got to correct them that, you know, you're not any better than I am, and I'm not any better than anybody else, you know. We're all the same. We're all family. And um, I just wish, I just wish that people, you know, would, would uh, at least grasp the hold of what I grasp and what I feel and what I see. And, you know, these issues of uh, prejudice has to be, you know, it, it's education. And uh, like, like was said, you know, if something's, something's wrong and it's broken, you can't fix it unless you know. And I've seen a lot of broken issues that need to be fixed. And, uh, um, you know, people are great. You know, if you just listen to people, you can learn. And uh, there's a lot to be learned out there. And, uh, you know, even though I don't know any of you people here, I just want to tell you one thing and, and that I've learned in life. I might not know you, but I love every one of you in my own special way. Sorry? <laughs> Let's just everybody keep it quick so we can get everybody I don't in. really, um, I think... Race is a very big issue in Buffalo. Ethnicity is a very big issue in Buffalo. It's a very ethnically divided city. Absolutely. And uh, I, I originate from New York City, which is very mixed. Um, I, I'm sure it has its divisions also. I lived in New Mexico where the Spanish culture is really... <coughs> it's got two official languages, you know, so in New Mexico. They don't... They don't try to put down Spanish folks the way their white uh, Arizonans are trying to do. Uh, I mean, race is it's a very important issue in the United States, I think, because uh, because this country is uh, the product of an invasion of Europeans. You know, I mean, a bunch of Europeans came and said, this is our country, you know. You don't exist, you know, the native people don't exist. But they tried to make them into white, and then they, you know, long history, but, uh, but basically I think because of that, race is really important, because there's no, you know, we're not all French, Swedish, English, you know, that's not the dominant group, and the white people try to be the dominant group, but but we're all, everybody who isn't of a pure native extraction is an immigrant, and so to try to make certain people the, uh, the rulers, it's just a continuation of what the English did. Yes. Um, but it, yeah, Buffalo is a very interesting situation. I think we could talk about it every week for a long, long time. Edie, <laughs> you want to say something yeah. briefly? Uh, um, very briefly. Uh, I'm reading the book yet, and it's talking about the development of economics and the kind of uh, drops out out of the set and he tries to just prove that in spirit. And um, one of the amazing things is how early slavery was used as a form of paying debt. And the debt became a moral issue and an issue of pride. And um, even in Ireland, as a short example, then I'll shut up, uh, they had when, uh, they, the word they used for money was a slave woman, even after they stopped having a slave woman. And in a lot of the cultures he's talked about so far in the book, the women were used as slaves and as exchange of money. And I think this has something relevant, because there's a lot more in there. There's something relevant. He talks about the development of the slave trade as well. You know, we might be talking about... Um white privilege, but um, not too far away is male privilege. Mm -hmm. right. And um, these things are all connected. Absolutely. My name is Jennifer, and um, when I was very young, I think I was much wiser than I am now. Mm -hmm. um, I've had to um, reclaim this basic understanding that I had through my life. It's been changed in, in bad ways and then in good ways with um, seeing the way people treat each other. As a child, I always... Um, loved playing with the little, the little black kids, little brown kids, and and I loved talking to them and being around them, and I couldn't understand that because I thought, I look different. Why do I associate with them and not the white kids? And um, I realized later in my life, after many experiences, that it was because we had a shared um, type of life 
We were poor. We were in the same area. We dealt with the same garbage from people that had stuff and we didn't. And um, I, I think that's an important understanding that, that we're being taught to separate ourselves from each other based on the way we look and we have so much in common. We need to start getting back to back together instead of letting everyone tell us that we're so very different from each other. Hi, mm -hmm. man. And uh, based off what you said, I remember reading something somewhere about that Buffalo is one of the most segregated cities. Mm -hmm. Number six in the United States. Mm -hmm. Number six. Well, it was number seven a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah, so Buffalo good. is a really interesting situation, and mm -hmm. I didn't really realize anything about white pri privilege because I came from John F. Kennedy, which is a prop. Mostly a white school. Graduate class of 100, one black kid. Nice. Yeah. And I go through there, and I never even noticed all the privileges that, that you mentioned there until I came to Buff State, which is a very, very diverse campus. And one of the biggest moments when we were me and my friends were driving through Franklinville, we were stopping at Burger King there. And I walk in, and I'm white, and it's, it's a predominantly white area, so I, I didn't feel any, like, I feel like I'm. Like, like, strange. Yeah, like, like out of my comfort zone. I felt fine there. Everyone treated me nice. Like, I walked in there with my friend Marche was black. My other friend, Ayan, from, I keep forgetting the name because I can't pronounce it. It's in Africa, North Africa. And another girl from India. Oh, I, and I walked in and I felt nothing. Like, I felt fine. And then we got in a car later and apparently, even at the calendar, they treated them differently. And also, people were staring at me the entire time. And my friend Ayan does have the head wrap. I forgot the name of it, though. H-I-J-A-B. Thank you. And I didn't really, like, that was like that, um, that, that moment where like, wow, I didn't really realize this because it was a culture shock that came to Buff State. But yeah, this whole, the whole white privilege thing, I didn't know about it until recently, probably within the last two years. Uh, my name is Morgan. Um, I've had, like, I guess what I could almost call um, very interesting experiences over the past few months that have kind of come to make me realize that, you know, the black experience of American life and the white experience of American life can be very different. And I don't mean stereotype, you know, but I've come to appreciate just recently, and this is somewhat naively, and it's not the stereotype, but, you know, African Americans tend to come from homes that have been touched by violence, you know, violent, like friends of theirs have been killed, relatives of theirs have been killed, white people not as much. And it's like the same thing with like employment, that it just seems to be kind of like, you know, again, two very different experiences that, you know, um, a lot of people that, you know, a lot of people I know have kind of gone, a lot of my black friends have gone through this where they've had problems with their employers.